Welcome. Thank you for taking the time today and then be with us. Um, so any any session that I attend, I always want to make sure that I take something away from it. So and then actually you use that at my workplace. So that's what we're going to do today. It's a very short 30 minute session, but we're going to talk a lot about how to implement very a very successful employee advocacy program just in three days. Sorry, three weeks. So uh, let's get started. Uh, one quick thing: so if you want to have, uh, if you have any comments or questions, uh, housekeeping. So we can use the Q and A. There is a chat, and then there's a Q and A option. Let's just use a Q and A option uh, so that you can send me questions during the session, or also like at the end of the session, I'll leave some time for just Q and A. Uh, we can discuss more questions there. Uh, again, don't hesitate to ask the question. I'll keep an eye, and then here also we are uh, others are keeping an eye on your Q and A uh, chat box here. Mm -hmm. So the agenda here is uh, let's get started with like you know what is employee advocacy. I think we all know about it. That's why we are here in the session to see how do we implement this very easily and then a successful solid plan that is very quick and then in three weeks we should be up and running. So there are several challenges, both technological and process challenges. I want to cover both because it's not only a technological challenge, uh, which is the tool to use and then how do we use it and who uses it and all those things. And then there is a huge portion of it is the process too. Because just imagine this is a, a marketing team, one team within the entire organization, trying to put a program for everyone in the company. So it is a huge initiative and then takes a lot of uh, planning and strategy in place before we go ahead and then execute that within the company. And then the uh, three week plan as promised. A little bit about myself, uh, I'm Pushpa Atal, founder and CEO of Market Beam. I worked here in the Silicon Valley, California in both startups and in large companies like, you know, the names that you recognize or maybe like, you know, Oracle and RSA, which is a cybersecurity company and I was part of uh, Dell. So in, during uh, when I was uh, in the marketing teams and trying to get the word out through social media, First thing that came to our mind is like, hey, let's ask the sales team and probably ask our management team and then through an email, right? So you send an email about a new content, new things that are coming out, either it's a product release or even like, you know, general um, marketing content. When we created the content, sent out emails to everyone, almost nothing happened, right? So the reason is people have to take a look at that email and share it with their networks. Probably some people did it, but not very frequently. It's very sporadic. So that's when I started looking at solutions that are out there. And one thing that I noticed was these platforms that were out there were not really helping employees to reduce their time and then truly engage. And they're almost, I mean, they're ready to get the word out about a company, but it should be super easy for them to do it. So I did not find a tool, right? I found it Market Beam, and then within 18 months, we are recognized as a high performer on G2 Crowd, which is completely driven by real customer reviews. So now let's uh, look at what is employee advocacy. Employee advocacy is becoming so popular, and then it, is, it has become a strategic a campaign that both like B2B, B2C, small and large companies, old and new, any industry. So they're all adopting to get the word out there because social media has become such a major channel in marketing and then we got to make use of it, right? So it started almost like a little over a decade ago as just a personal thing and then the businesses got into it and now they're figuring out the best and most efficient way to use social media and then getting the word out there to the right people, right? So the like survey says, right? The survey says 
one in two social marketers use influencer marketing. So if you hear something from a friend, on the left-hand side, you see here, there's a pie chart. So if you hear something which is basically a referral, uh, it is considered as a referral if you hear something from your friend and there's a huge percentage of people that are ready to take action when we hear something from someone we know. That's like over 61% here. And the second portion here is uh, someone that we know in the industry. I mean, we don't know them personally, but they are influencers in the industry. And then if we hear something from them, then we're gonna take action. So that drives true engagement because we heard this about this great service, great product from someone we know, and then the engagement is going to be much higher. So we are ready to take action. And then for businesses, that is creating top of the funnel, right? So the awareness, the uh, engagement, reach, and then that is creating top of the funnel. And then also kind of pushing that through the funnel to uh, in increase that lead nurturing. So, and then the conversions are much higher. So let's look at how this works. Marketing and communications team, create content based on the strategies, based on the campaign goals, create content, and then they're ready to post on social media. So reach out to all your employees, your colleagues, to spread the word on their own social networks, on Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, any social network out there, reaching tens of thousands of people with a small group of even like 50 or 100 employees can reach over tens of thousands of people, right? So then like how it works is a platform like MarketBeam, right? Uh, users connect their social accounts to the platform when there is new content that is produced by marketing and then gets pushed out on this platform and all these employees automatically they're all sharing into their own networks we need the, to kick start that content virality on social media on digital so that it gets to the next level of audiences and then that can be done so easily because just think about it. The people that are building the brand are the best advocates for any company or any brand compared to an outside influencer. This is even better because they know so much about the company and then people can relate. Hey, this person works for it. And then I'm going to take a look at uh, this content. So the, we are building top leadership. We're building awareness, uh, doing lead gen, lead nurturing, all these starts with the good content and the right people to distribute the content. However, there are many challenges. As I mentioned earlier, there are technological challenges and then also process-wise. Think about what is, the, what is any program or any, uh, any campaign or within the company is run by one team. Probably it is your IT, they don't really like talk to everybody, but there is a techno technology behind it. And maybe it is HR, right? So those are the only two things come to my mind that one group within a company getting everybody in the company to take action and do something. So in this process, so here we are asking everyone in the company, I mean, it could be like face by face, only like, you know, like sales first, then your customer support, then your engineering and then all those. But when you're getting everyone in the company involved, there are many challenges. So it has never done before because always most of the campaigns, even like marketing campaigns, are it is within the, the group itself, the strategy, the tasks, and then the um, uh, onboarding. Everything is within one group. And then now we are going across the groups within a company. So there are planning challenges. There are adoption challenges. And then of course we are going to measure ROI, right? So that is the good part about all these campaigns. So the planning, there's lack of strategy. So when I talk about a challenge, I'm going to mark it as is this a process challenge or a technology challenge. And then we'll come back and then see how we can uh, address those challenges. 
Lack of strategy. I would say lack of strategy because most of the times social media becomes only a channel because we talk about, okay, of course it has to start from an internal goal, internal campaign planning, and then all the content should be aligned with this major marketing goal and then also major business goal. So that's always like inside out most of the companies that we talk to and then they do not consider what's happening currently on social media and then bring that back to their strategy. For example, so what are the trending topics? So let's say it is even like, you know, a topic that's parallel to your business, not really very connected to your business, like women in technology or like, you know, uh, women in power. So that is, Women empowerment, women in technology are such hot topics out there. And then how do you connect that with the things that you're doing today? But that is like an outside strategy that's happening in social media world. And then you're bringing that back to your own strategy within. So I would call that a process because it's not the technology, it's the process. And it's the um, uh, process that you put it within the teams. And then lack of planning is also process. I will call it planning because when you have a content ready, so the process goes as, okay, this is my planning, and then it ends up being a piece of content, and then what is the distribution strategy? So many times we don't think about what is the distribution strategy before we create the content. We know where the audience is, so that's why we create the content, but we don't know all the details of how this is going to be distributed, who is going to talk about this piece of content on which channel and then how many um, following that they have we don't know all those details so if we have this whole group of our colleagues ready to get the word out and make it so vital we got to have a plan we got to have a plan in terms of like what is the hashtagging what's the tagging and then whom are we going to um, make like a star in this post and then everybody is tagging each other and then cross pollinating their audiences all these comes into planning and then buying from management yeah that's true that's for that's true for a yeah, like any uh product that you buy or any service any program that you put together in a company but this one very specifically needs a little bit more attention here right because as i said um there are more teams involved and then you got to go across the companies it's multiple teams within the company and you got to have that influence so it is also a process one uh, as uh, like adoption so every every um I think every, any program that you put in, there is a generic rule of thumb. Any program that you add, there is a 66% adoption only. Any program, that's just a general rule of thumb, right? But what we've seen, I mean, with our own customers, uh, it's, it's a little bit higher. There is adoption by all these uh, employees. So buy-in from employees, I would call that both process and tool or the technology problem. The reason for that is it, it should be easy. I'll, I'll tell you about like, you know, how they participate is we are asking for their time. We're asking for their participation. So how we equip them to do it also matters. So it's not just the process, it's the tool as well. So the next one is education, the content and frequency. So that is to do with the process. So because they need to make everybody's protective of their social networks and then how we um, help them, how we help them understand what is, what is going to happen to my social network, what content is going to be released and then who is going to post and then how often we post and who is going to see it, everybody's protective. Okay? So that is a process one and then time consuming. It's very time consuming, even if it's like 10 seconds. We all are in our own world every day doing things. And then sometimes, sometimes it's procrastination, right? Laziness, but I wouldn't want to tie that with it. Versus we need to solve the problem with technology, right? So we have things that can be automated and then how do we sell it? I think we could solve that with the technology. And security and compliance, this is going back to like the protective about social networks. 
We know that Facebook has been in uh, big trouble for the past one year uh, since last summer, and then everybody has started thinking about user data, who is going to use, who is going to do what with this, and all those questions come in. And uh, I know that some of you uh, in the audience today are from cybersecurity. Uh, probably, definitely, you will be thinking about how do I convince all my colleagues who are in security and threat analysts to actually participate. Um, okay, the question here. Okay, so the okay, thank, thank, okay, thank you for the question. Uh, let me just answer it. I think. You saw GDPR already, okay. So the question is, what do you have for GDPR? Okay, so GDPR uh, is, we, as we all know, um, this is the uh, compliance set of things that Europe started putting that uh, together for all these businesses, how they manage data, right? So quickly, like how we do that is, we do not store any user data. When a user connects their social account to Market Beam, it is restricted to only us getting access to post content on their behalf and nothing else. Let's say somebody's uh, liked another post and then that's not through Market Beam, that's just their personal. We do not know what it happens. Any activity that's on social media, we do not know. All we have is access and we don't even have the security, uh, the passwords for, for example, LinkedIn. I don't have, we don't have the passwords for these users. And then we do not store any user data. Once it's deleted, it's truly gone. And then no activities are um, stored either. There are a whole, a whole bunch of things. Um, maybe, probably we can uh, connect later and I'll send, send you the whole list of GDPR things that we uh, take care of within the product. And then with my security background, definitely we would take care of it. <laughs> and then measuring ROI, we all love to measure ROI and then show it to the, you know, or like show it to not just our boss, but everybody in the company to know it. And then to the management team, right? So there must be actionable analytics um, because when you have data, there's a huge difference between data and analytics. There are so many things out there, like you know, impressions. That's all I would consider data. That's not analytics. Impressions or likes and click clicks and then comments. That's just data. And then how do you turn that into using that in your strategy? That's a whole different level. And then we got to do that, solve that with the tool, and then also user analytics. The user analytics is important because uh, your colleagues will ask the question, "Hey, I." I, you sent me some information, I posted on my social media, so now what? What happened? So immediately what we have seen our users uh, experience is like, people are trying to connect with me on LinkedIn and probably it's reaching, their content is reaching a lot more people now. But other than that, they don't know anything. So that way we can solve that through technology by showing them the results that they are seeing individually, not just at the company level. So now that we segregated all these things with this, let's just go through this, how do we solve it very quickly. So the time consuming challenge. So let's just solve that with a tool, right? So the way that we solve it is there's one thing, it's pre-approved content. That means every content that goes through marketing, it would be, uh, sorry, I thought there was another question coming up again. So somebody is asking, do you see even a CEO or management people participate? Okay, that's a good question. So yes, so we have seen even the CEO use, actually use this auto share. So we do this by auto share, especially sales teams love it. And then automatically they share content. And then otherwise there's a notification as well. And then personalization. So some people ask, hey, everybody in the company is doing the same thing. How do I differentiate myself and then keep my voice separated out? So there are multiple ways. One is by content. So you can personalize your own content. And the other one is time of the day. We call it actually drip campaign, social media drip campaign. So the drip campaign is uh, everyone in the company gets a slot. And then basically it is driven by internal machine, the algorithms internally. And then they post it at different times. 
Say for example, this is Bob, and then Bob Pay was picked at eight o'clock, and then he is uh, sharing content. And then, but tomorrow, Bob gets probably chat on like ten o'clock, right? But it's still within the business hours, or sometimes it's just the um, hours that you choose. And then probably this is Eileen, and then Eileen gets chosen tomorrow to be posted at eight o'clock. So it's different times for uh, first of all keeping the content fresh, and then also for uh, other things here. So the actionable metrics, actionable metrics are you need to get the uh, metrics in such a way that you that drives your content strategy. We have a few things here. I think uh, um, I want to spend more time on the implementation. So that's why I'm rushing through this. So there are content types. So what happens, let, let's say like in you know, LinkedIn, Facebook, all these social networks are different companies and they would never give you a single dashboard. Say for example, SEO, it's only mostly major two companies are maybe Bing and Google, and then they give you one analytics, but here you need to put all the analytics together and see what happened to my content. We go into the details of so much that whether your videos are performing better and then articles or events or anything, and then show that and then that uh, drives your content strategy. Uh, and then there is gamification, which is the leaderboard here. It is shared by all, shared with all the users. And then the individual users also get to see this entire dashboard and then see post level analytics and who is sharing what at what time people are engaging in all these data. All right, so let's get to our three week plan. So the three week plan. Um, now that we know that there are challenges, and then we talked about the challenges that we can solve with the technology, right? So how do people participate? It should be super easy for them. And then hands-free version, which is very popular among mostly the sales teams, and where they say it, like, I set it up, and then when there is a content, and then automatically they're sharing it. So the three-week plan, let's get started with the first week. So first week is all about strategy and planning, right? So strategy and planning, and then within the marketing team here. So within the marketing team, the participants here are VP marketing. Mostly it's like head of marketing. Uh, they should be involved in the strategy if not using the tool itself at that point. And the marketing team, and then we, have, uh, we recommend not more than five people to participate in this first week. The goal here is to get familiarized with the product and then coming up with a strategy and plan how do we implement in the next two weeks, all right? So first of all, uh, I wanna share that this three-week plan is based on us kind of like learning by just trial and error with several companies that we work with and our own customers. And then now this is the result of those again, trial and error so that our next customers don't have to go with that error part, right? So uh, this plan has been very successful in getting the people to onboard. Here the task first week is social marketing assessment and strategy recommendation. So we call it social marketing assessment is uh, how do you compare yourself with your competitors, what is going on in the industry with uh, social marketing? And then what are the trending topics? What do you have to use? And there's a lot of assessment about today what you have and then how you have to shape up your content and then postings. And then there's a lot of strategy recommendation. We help with that, we as our internal team. And then also social calendar. If you have one, that's well and good, but it has to be a mixture of content where it's thought leadership, external content, a combination of internal content, even with an internal, it's thought leadership, it's others too, right? We also help with that. So the success criteria here is social strategy is ready, social calendar is ready, and then you have next two weeks of content that's ready when all the users are onboarded. So that's the first week's plan. Um, so there's a lot of heavy lifting that happens in social marketing assessment. And so that's why we've done it so many times. So we're going to like, you know, uh, okay, so what is included in that? And then would that be part of social marketing assessment? 
a free marketing assessment from marketing comes with. Okay, so uh, I think you saw that there is a free social marketing assessment uh, that we're gonna give it away for those who attended today. So the a part of that, I'm gonna cover that in the next slide and the details of what we're gonna cover. So it is basically your social footprint and then much more than that. Uh, and then the second week, pick initial 50 users if you're a much larger company or at least start with 25, usually we say 50. And then onboarding is identifying participant is the first thing. And then the second one is get your head of marketing to introduce the program to everybody in the company. And then we help with that too, with this, which is basically literally a draft email, which is working out for everyone. If you miss any of these steps, we've seen some people want to like try and like doing different things, but this is somehow is going to be like the best thing that we recommend to our own customers, which I'm sharing with you guys. Uh, onboarding call and then market main invitations to all users. Those are the tasks, but it has to go in an order where they get the invitations right before the onboarding call and pe because people need to understand what's, what is in it for me? What's in it for me? Okay. Um, okay, I answered that. So, and then the marketing invitations, that means it's basically invitation to join Market Beam and then connect their social account has to happen at that time. And then everybody needs to understand. So the successful criteria here is social media team is hands-on with posting. Uh, okay, so here there's a name. <laughs> this is a head of marketing for, uh, for a company. I literally picked that up from one of our customers. So we even identify who has to do what, right? So the, here, the head of marketing sent out an introductory email to users. They all send it out, they are onboarded and then ready to post successfully the first thing. And the third week, we are already monitoring. And uh, there's another question. So can you go over the structure of onboarding calls? So that's a good question. Um, so the onboarding calls, the way that we do is either it's, sometimes it's multiple locations, so we've we got to have multiple time zones covered too. So if there is an all hands call, that would be the perfect time to introduce that to everybody. So uh, otherwise it's the regional calls or the sales calls versus um, uh, engineering call. If you already have something already scheduled, it's better to uh, just invite us that we can help, but sometimes we just provide the air content and then you can uh, conduct the meetings too. So in the onboarding calls, we send out the invitations to join right before the call. So when during the call, they understand what's in it for me. I, I'm sending all these content to my own uh, networks. I'm building my own thought leadership and then I'm nurturing my own leads. They need to understand that part and then what is the content and what, how frequently the content goes out is very important too. So once they feel comfortable about it and all the security questions are answered, and then during the call, we give them prime minutes to actually look at their emails and then try to log in and get their social account set up. At the end of the 30 minute call, you would be surprised at how many people are already set up and the next thing you do is the next day, send out your first post and then they're all ready to go in. So if we don't have this, uh, like do it right now while you are on the call, it's again like, you know, sometimes it's procrastination, sometimes people just miss out or they don't know what to do. Uh, they have a lot of questions and the uh, adoption rate goes down. Okay, uh, all right, so that's another, I, I thought there was another question coming up. Oh, so, okay, so there's another question. We are a startup with 45 employees and does employee advocacy work? Absolutely, so it, it doesn't matter. We, we, we say usually about uh, 50 is the minimum number of users, but it doesn't matter. Even with the 25, we have started uh, with the phase approach with 25 users and then take it to the next level and then bring different groups. First, always go to sales. That's what we've seen. Go to sales, go to your management team. Of course, marketing team would be involved and get them on board, show some results and then share it with the next phase of people then it that's when the third week here the plan is rest of the users that we add 
and then also dashboard review and then adjust the content based on learning so of course that we always do and then we take those results hey this is the post and in the top leaderboard he is the person and then this is the one and then that's getting so many um click through so much engagement and then what they have seen so far share it with the rest of the team share it with your face you are just like you know every month we call something like um social employee of the month so that encourages them to see okay i'm on the top of the list and then i'm performing quite well compared to my it's it's a gamification thing um, so just to quickly onboarding materials, the social calendar, we actually come up with an entire social calendar, email introductions, and then, okay, there's another question we can quickly answer. Uh, and then the onboarding calls. So if you have more questions, you can definitely reach out to us, but I want to make sure that I get this to you. Uh, there is a free marketing assessment. This is a lot of work that goes behind the scenes from us. Social media footprint, competitive analysis, con the social content strategy, and then executive influence. So how your executives are uh, on social media, are they social enough? And then are they hands-on? We have other things for just to how do you engage your uh, C-suite and then management team. All these things go into that. Uh, and then this is uh, a free marketing assessment for everyone. If you if you have a time or just want to uh, leave your emails or anything or even like you know date and time, you can do that on the even the Q and A right now, or you could go schedule it. I'm going to post this link here. Um, I'm going to post this link in the chat for everybody to copy it. This is uh, our calendar. You can go schedule it. I would do a chat. Did you, did you see that? Uh, I think I did. Okay, now I see it. Uh, that is the uh, calendar link. You can go schedule it right away. Um, otherwise, uh, you just leave your uh, date and time right here, and then some one of us will actually make a note and then get back to you. Okay. Uh, if you have more questions, just reach out to me. It is uh, simple. Again, I'm going to put it here. Push for at marketbeam.io that's easy to remember um otherwise uh, just uh, reply to the email that you got about the webinar thank you everyone thank you so much for your time today and then uh, we'll look forward to connecting with you in person sometime thanks bye